um, in addition to some other charter schools that um, specifically in the, um, the most significant areas that were that were hurt. So we're, we're going to be rolling that out as a group, as a Somerset Inc. Um, and we'll be sharing that information with you all on social media and on our website if anybody wants to help um, donate or, or uh, raise, help us raise funds to help the schools in that area. Um, but again, back to the playground, we had a little delay in the turf, so that should be coming hopefully in the next couple of weeks so we can get that up and running. Um, and then we'll be hopefully on our way with the completion of the playground. Um, our safety and security updates for this meeting, um, everything's been going um, smoothly. Um, we have our SRO, and we thank you all for being flexible with our, um, you know, our carpool and dismissal procedures. Um, we have we have to keep the traffic flowing and moving, so we appreciate you consistently doing that. Um, uh, she's been working with the guard officer truck as our SRO, making sure that everything um, continues to move and, and um, we have a successful arrival and dismissal, but also have a safe uh, school day. So I know today um, you might have gotten a message. Uh, there was lots of things going on in the news today. So apparently um, there were some hoaxes called in to Dade County Public Schools and also to Broward County Schools. We never received a hoax phone call or anything like that, uh, but we were asked by Broward County Public Schools because we do have a high school on campus. We were asked to go into our secure mode, which is used to be code yellow, um, but it's a, uh, this year it's, it's secure, which means that the doors are locked, everybody's inside, students are moving throughout the building with supervision. So that's what we did for a few hours today, um, and that we wanted to make sure that we were open with you all, and that's why we sent that message um, to let you know. Okay, so anytime we have any kind of issue, our standard protocol is to notify our families. Um, whether, you know, we try to get it out as quickly as we can, um, and also when it's been clear so that way everybody knows that we're, we're safe. So there was no direct threat to our campus or any, anywhere else um, around us today, but that's what Broward decided to do. Um, because unfortunately, some students in different places um, decide to make wrong choices, bad choices, and do things that they don't understand sometimes the magnitude of. Um, excuse me, and I think today something happened in Dade County with a, with a nine-year-old, um, actually was the one that called in the threat to the school. So these are opportunities, at least I see them for opportunities for discussion, positive discussions you can have with your kids to let them know that we don't ever want to pretend um, of any kind of threat of violence against anyone. Um, so that's something that you know, we take definitely take seriously. We work in conjunction with our SRO and the SIU unit with Broward County Public Schools, and that's what happened today. So we will continue to um, make those announcements and messaging as we as we move through um, the school day, and hopefully we never you know, we don't have to encounter anything like that. But just know that we're prepared and ready to to move around our schedule of what we have to do to make sure everybody's always safe. Okay, um, I think that. Uh, is my updates. I know we have um, some big dates coming, especially for testing, so I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Bolostra. Okay, so we have um, upcoming uh, activities on the calendar. Ms. Mincy, do you want to talk about the tutoring, after school tutoring that started today? Uh, good, after, good evening, everyone. We kicked off our elite tutoring. We're actually focusing on math currently for grades six through Eight. And we also are featuring Algebra 1 as well as Geometry. So if you have any students that are in those grade levels, we would love to have them join us for tutoring. It will run through December 1st, and those actual tutoring schedules, sessions will take place only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So this is an opportunity for students that are struggling in some areas to get that added support and also students that want to dive into some of these new standards that we're focusing on for the new school year, which is FAST, they will be exposed to those standards as well, helping prepare them for the FAST AP2 test that's coming up in December, and then we have one AP3 next year. If you have any questions, feel free to ask any questions at this time. Yes? Will yes. that be for 10th graders as well? Yes, well, if the student is enrolled in either Algebra 1 or Geometry. So that student might be in Geometry, so yes, that will be open for our ninth and 10th graders. Most of our ninth graders 
Eighth and ninth grade algebra one, and then we have our 10th and some 11th graders that are taking geometry. So yes, for our grade levels in the middle and high school. Tuesday and Thursday is from three to four. And the cost is $25 only, one time fee, and that covers your child's tutoring resources. very fine that you can actually um, pay Friday. Um, tutoring is still open for registration online. If you go to our website, somersetcentral.org, we actually have a payment system set up where you can pay online. So it's still open, it's not closed. exam on October 27th with Ms. Barbastro overseeing it. Um, we do have that group of students that are working on SAT prep material, but we do not have anything yet currently for SAT prep, but we will consider that for our 11th and 12th graders as well as our 10th graders to help prepare them for those college entry exams. Great idea, thank you. And more information will be forthcoming on SAT tutoring assistance provided for our students. No more questions about algebra school children. I highly recommend that if you, if you have a student, uh, child in algebra one or geometry that even if they're making all eights in that class, to sign them up for tutoring. Matter of fact, in math and reading, even if they're making A's and B's, they still need to be in tutoring. Like it's, especially in math, it's very important that they um, you know, have that extra help after school because sometimes they're not going home, you know, doing their homework. Okay, um, PSATs are coming up tomorrow. These are for our 10th graders. The state does pay for um, all 10th graders in the state of Florida to test for the PSAT. Um, this particular test is to see who qualifies for the merit scholarship. Um, after they take the test, usually around April or May, they'll send me the list of names um, who um, apply, who will, who will, who are able to continue on applying for the merit scholarship. So then, what happens? They'll take the test again in eleventh grade, the PSAT, um, to see if they get the scholarship. And I think we had a, a few from last year who um, are on the list for the merit scholarship. So this is. Um, something that the state pays for, so all 10th graders will be taking it. Now I do have some 11th and 12th graders who will be taking the um, exam for their Algebra 1 um, uh, credit for to get their, what is it? To get the, meet their requirement for Algebra 1. Um, I am taking 11th and 12th graders to a college fair that Mir the city of Miramar is hosting this Friday. So um, we are um, trying to get them, you know, to think about, especially the seniors, because applications are due, most of them, most of the schools, the applications are due November 1st. Um, so we will be doing a college fair with the city of Miramar this Friday. I also um, been in contact with the University of Miami, um, Florida Atlantic University to set up some college tours there. Um, I've been in contact with a company who's trying to get me to do a college tour um, for UCF, um, FSU, but I'm trying to get the one who um, actually has FAMU on the list because a lot of our kids are interested in going to FAMU. Woo! So, <laughs> so um, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, for elementary, first and second grade, we'll be doing a field trip to the pumpkin patch on the 19th of October. Um, my two classes, I'm the class sponsor of the eighth grade class and the class sponsor of the 11th graders, and we will be hosting an elementary fall dance for the elementary kids on the 20th, and it's also early release that day too. 
and there's no school on October 21st, because it's a teacher's planning. The week of October 24th is Ribbon Week, so um, the flyers will be going home for the dress down that week, and the activities that elementary will be doing, and then the dress down that middle and high uh, will also be doing. Okay, so. Ms. Ian has been so very kind to pay for the SATs for October 27th for all the seniors. Um, so yeah, we're doing that. But I will I will say this. I tell all the students by the time they end their 10th grade year, they should be signing up in the summertime for SAT or ACT. They need to start taking these tests as soon as that time because they can take it more than once. And a lot of them think, oh, I'll just take it one time. No, you take it more than once because um, your scores for SAT and ACT are based on your Bright Future Scholarship. Also, we will be having the Elementary Storybook Parade October 31st for elementary. Dual enrollment. Okay, for dual enrollment, Somerset participates in Doral College as well as Burrard College dual enrollment program. It is open for our eight through 12th grade students for Doral College and for Burrard College, they start the students at grade nine. For spring term, Burrard College, the deadline to submit for registration is today. Don't get discouraged. That's for the spring term, but students still have the opportunity to sign up for the summer term. For Doral College, Doral College term for spring, students still have the opportunity to sign up up until January. So I've been working with a lot of our students here on campus and the requirements for both programs, students have to have a 3.0 GPA. As for Doral, our eighth graders, they start our eighth graders as early as eighth grade. The requirements for them, they should have a 3.0 GPA or higher and they must have a credit of a high school credit course with a high school GPA in order to start. For our eighth graders, they can start taking the very first course, college course called College Success, without taking the college entry exam. And it's actually three parts to the Accuplacer College Entry Exam. It's math, it's the writing, and it's the English. So if you have a child that has those expectations, those requirements, I highly recommend that you reach out to me via email or have the students see me on campus first thing in the morning or during lunch, and I'm more than welcome to give them all information in reference to both programs. Also, I wanted to mention that it's a great opportunity, parents, because Somerset pays for your child to take college courses. And we've had several of our students, we had 11 to graduate this past July, June, walk across the stage, not only get their high school diploma, but they also earned their associate's arts degree. So they're halfway through the program as a senior graduating and only have like two more years to earn that bachelor's degree. And they earned it all for free. So we just ask that students be very committed uh, the work is very rigorous, it's very challenging, and then we ask that the students, you know, make an A or a B. But it's an awesome, awesome opportunity for parents where it saves you money. And there's parents here that can attest to it because they actually had their kids try it. November 10th, the report cards will be out on uh, virtual counseling. 
and Mr. Morty. As well as Good evening. Uh, we ask parents that you continue to help us with our dress code policy. Let me say that again. Our dress code policy, simply meaning that khaki pants for a high school, uh, school appropriate shirt. The biggest issue that we have are hoodies. Since July, we've been talking about hoodies not being allowed on campus. This is for the safety of your students. Simply put, when kids put hoodies on, they cover up their faces, we cannot see. If anybody else happens to breach our campus, then the safety and security team has to work just a tad bit harder to identify those people. With anything that can happen in today's society, especially for what we saw today, we're very, very productive and reactive, or proactive, I'm sorry, to the safety and security of our students. We have 1,300 students on this campus. We ask that you help us with that. In addition, you know where you drop your children off in the morning. So when you need to reach them, the best number is 954-435-1570. If cell phones and earbuds are on campus, I will confiscate. I will say that again. I will confiscate and I will not return it until you come and get them. Please, ma'am and please, sir, if they are not needed during the learning environment, it helps us become a better school, less drama, less everything that's happening on, in the world for those seven, eight hours that those students can focus diligently on their academic growth. We ask that you help us to the utmost capacity, please. Thank you. Okay, you are... Um, the GPA. Okay, so to qualify for 100%, they would have to um, get a 29 on their ACT, a 13 something, I'm not sure about the SAT, um, and they have to have 100 volunteer hours, and their GPA has to be like a 3.7, 100% paid for. It depends on, and it also depends on what school they go to. So, like my son goes to UM. Very touching. For the scholarship, but it pays for it. He gets like 2300 So it depends. And then, um, but he only gets 75% paid. Like, he only gets the 75%, which 75% is he um, 3.5 SAT, or ACT of 25, and um, I'm not sure about the SAT part, but 75, uh, 75 volunteer hours. So it, it also depends on the school they go to and the amount of money those schools have for the different scholarships. Okay, so if you um, want any um, thing on the agenda, you can feel free to email me if you have any concerns, comments, or questions. So our next SAT meeting will be January 24, 2024. Okay. So, motion to adjourn the meeting. Meeting adjourned.